Hello friends and welcome to another build and you're here on the video so we are building a barrel this time around. So right off the bat, down below in the description you're going to find a link to a template file which will be carrying this piece here and this piece here. We're going to be worrying about this first because this is the one we need to do the most of. What I did is I cut it out and then I worked it and put it onto heavier card so I could trace it multiple times because you're going to have to do this 12 separate times to get it to where you need. Now, what you're going to be cutting these out of is EVA foam exercise mats. These are the ones with the backing. This one looks particularly dirty because I bought a set of foam mats that somebody sold, 60, 40, 60 of them. They had them underneath their pool and they look a bit dirty, but they've been fantastic. Like you needed to know that, but you get to know it anyways. So. What we're going to be doing now is using just a standard knife. We're going to be tracing this onto the foam mats. I just use a pen and over time it dies. It doesn't even, you know, actually put pen down anymore. I just have the mark from where it punctured it because anyways, the, the foam mats kick the crap out of pens. Using a sharp knife and you want to make sure it's sharp for all of these cuts. What you'll want to do is the actual stave needs to be slightly angled on the inside. So you want to take your knife and just kick it at about 25 degrees. You might have to do a couple test runs to get it right. But once you start getting the angle at about 22.5 degrees, you run that through beautifully and smoothly. I'm probably going to go off the camera, so I apologize. You come through and you hold that. Now, don't try to do this side. Flip, flip your whole piece of styrofoam and do it again. Because, or your piece of foam, because you'll find that life will be just that much easier. So just very nicely and gently follow those curves through. Try to be as accurate as possible. You see I wandered out a tiny bit there. Not the end of the world. These top and the bottoms don't have to be angled. They can just be flat cut. And that'll get us to where we need to be here. Now, once you've got it to this point, that is your stave and you can see hopefully the angle there is pretty decent it doesn't have to be absolutely exact you're just looking for something that will allow this to you know have some angle to it so when you put it into the barrel you're not dealing with like flat curves and the the angle of this when it gets bent will really cause some problems if you don't do it this way so once you've got it to this point you're going to be taking the same knife now I keep what's called a strop around and every once in a while while working on foam, I will strop this thing because it is necessary to keep this knife as sharp as possible. Now we're gonna be putting wood grain. I'm going to point to a video up here, which was the video that I'd done before regarding this wood grain, but I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do one more just so the people who like to see the work that I do can see the work that I do. So I'll be quiet, let the montage play out for a few moments as I go and cut the wood grain. So there you can see that the wood grain is all done and the depth is about maybe an eighth of an inch. I'll see if you can see there. You're not going super deep. You're just making the pattern deep enough so when you go hit this with the air gun, that it causes all those gaps to open up and you end up with a really nice wood grain. Now, this is the fun part. You're going to go do this 12 separate times because you need a whole bunch of staves. So I suggest you put on a movie while you do this. If not, you're going to go stir crazy because it's a lot of cutting, but it looks good in the end. And then the very end, all I did is I took uh, the knife and I notched the top and the bottom. It's hard to do it randomly, so on some of them, don't do it completely, just do one. And once we've got it to this point, we're going to go outside and we're going to get this thing prepped with doing some uh, sanding with the Dremel just to get these edges all prepped up for when they actually go to start being on the sea. assembled on the barrel. I'll see you there in a moment. And welcome to the secret lair. Okay, we've got our 12 pieces all out in the garage of messiness. Well, after a winter of not wanting to be out here, it is the garage of messiness. Mess, 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 me, miss, messiness. 
So for our next step, we're going to need a heat gun, and we're going to need a Dremel, and... Look at that, they're both hooked up. Thinking ahead here. So, now the main step here is you're going to be taking the, the Dremel with a sanding bit on. You can see here, just a standard sanding bit, and uh, or sanding drum, or however you want to call it. And I'm going to quickly just, I can't really talk over the sound of the Dremel because it's almost impossible. So I'm just going to quickly show you where I go and I'll talk to you about it after. All right. So you can see there how I managed to get all of the, like this off, the, the finished side. So we're going to be gluing something here. So I have to make sure you don't have to drill it, go down too far. You just want to make sure that's rough enough for something to stick. And around the outside, I just chamfered the edge. You don't want to be too hard on this. You just want to do a little bit. So it ends up with a really nice difference between the, the staves. So once you've got to that point, it's going to be a moment again. Hopefully you can actually hear me. Okay. And then you're going to hit it with the heat gun. And you can see that how it opens up all of those lines beautifully. Done. And now, this is where you go, Oh my god, Sawin, what are you doing? You scratched your styrofoam! Oh, my EVA, EVA foam. So, deliberate. I think it looks really cool when it finished. Uh, this may or may not be the second one that I've done, which you might see the second one at the end, where I did this. And this extra bit of aging, with this, I didn't paint this. I left it as is because I just love the way this looked. With that color of the, the sun exposed, dirt exposed uh, foam just turned out to be a beautiful color. So what you wanna do is you wanna go through and do 12 of these and I'll see you back inside when we start assembling it. Okay, I've gotta be quick here. I have put onto the edge of all of these slats some contact cement, letting it dry, but I did them all at once. So by the time I finished this one, the one up here is already tacky and ready to, it's not tacky but it's ready to go i don't want to extend it much further so i'm going to get into this right away so when you go to assemble these now you want to first of all give them a quick pre-bend just to get some curve into them so you're not fighting it as much as you go to stick them together starting with the back i want to see if i can get this properly line up the backs because of that edge on the front it's going to screw things up and then what you do is you line up the bottom next See where it goes to there, and then alternating ends. Oh man, these things, when they stick, they stick. So alternating ends, you just go through and you stick them together and you end up with your barrel starting to be formed. So I'm gonna shut up now. I'm going to try keeping this all on camera as I go and stick the rest of them. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, well, that was fun. Um, you can see that I had to quickly finish up and put a little bit more uh, rubber cement on two of the joints that kind of dried before I could get to them. You can build these things in the half and the half. It's probably easier than what I just did there, but you know, I was gonna see if I could do it. <laughs> I couldn't. So anyways, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll be back to start talking. Actually, I got them right here. The tops of the barrel, I'm just going to close up my rubber cement before it dries out on me. The tops of the barrels are cut out of that secondary template that you saw right at the beginning, right here. You're going to need two of them. And then what I did is because they've got, uh, what is it, a 12-sided 12 uh, 12 polygon? What would that be? Not a dodecahedron, it's a decahedron? No, it's that thing. 
with 12 sides. Anyways, <laughs> I picked two of the points and I used it to draw a line through to give me a board separation. Cut it with the knife and then cut it with an angle to give it and then do the exact same treatment as before where you go through and you cut all of the grain. Uh, are you sick of doing grain yet? Because uh, when you get to this point, you might be. Anyways, I'm gonna go get these all heat treated in the garage and hopefully by that time, my contact cement is ready to be used and we will talk about our next step. Now, this is a quick note here. The barrel, if it does not have perfect bonding on those joints, don't worry about it a heck of a lot. There's supports going on the inside and by the time we're done, there's some supports that go on the outside to hold it all together. But you can always put some more contact cement in the seam and then just do something like driving a pen into that seam as it dries. And then when it's done, you pull out the pen and the seam will come together and fix up exactly a problem. It's kind of like that right there. Anyways, I'll be back. Now, you've got this whole thing together and you can see on the inside edge here, I have glued using the contact cement a line of foam to pretty much act as a backstop for the lid when it goes on. Now, what I do is I just use a ruler, measure one inch in, and I put a mark all the way around, and then it allows me to know where I have to put the contact cement. So you put the contact cement on the inside, put the contact cement on that stick, and you're done. And you can see the bottom is the same way. And once you're on, you'll do the same thing. You'll pretty much just run contact cement along the top of this, along the inside rim of this. Make sure if you're going to just give that a sand down. But in reality, these things stick very well without actually being cemented in. Strange, it's actually acting like a barrel. You can make it so these can stay removable. It is up to you. Um, but yeah, they can come out regardless. Now, on the outside, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting on some gold trim. And what this is, this is just quarter inch um, EVA foam that's from a large mite. You can still see the texture on the back. I cut it into an inch and a quarter strip. And then using the Dremel, I just sanded down the edge ever so slightly. You, if you've watched my videos before, you've seen me do this technique. And then I'll just spray paint it gold. You can do it silver, depending on what color you want your barrel to be. I like the gold because I usually end up going with a rust color on it. And the gold happened to be the color that I had kicking around as a bottle. Now, on the outside, you can see here now, I've got some marks. This is at one inch down and then one and a quarter inch down from that. So what I do is I go one inch and then two and a quarter. And then I go around the whole barrel, putting in those marks on the top and the bottom. And then what that does is it gives me a gauge so when I go to put the contact cement on, I can put it between those lines and I make sure that I don't end up with a bunch of contact cement all over the place when I go to put this on. Now, I'll show you after because if you have this foam, make sure you use a full length. My, the last piece I had ended up being, I think it was like the ends here and ends here. So I have to do a transition. I'll show you how I do it at the end, but it's... Whoa, Focus, focus, right, there we go. In the end, it's not because of anything other than I'm having to do an extra step because I don't have the right material on hand. Anyways, I'm gonna go get this all glued down and then we will talk about doing extra aging on this and we will also talk about how we are going to do the label. See in a few. Now, you can see that the label is on here. I'm including both these labels with the template file, and you can see it's a, <laughs> it is complete malarkey. It's supposed to be like the Kentucky Rifle Gunpowder, and I completely made it local, so it doesn't have any ties to anything, which I think is pretty cool. So it's the Alberta Rifle uh, Gunpowder Company, Cooley Powder Co. Turned out, and from nowhere, Alberta. <laughs> Anyways, so you can see, and what I did here is I just used wood glue to stick this thing down. And then when it was done, I put a coat of Varathane over top of it to make sure it sticks down. If it comes up a little bit, that's fine. It'll add the authenticity to it. And then when I was all done, I took a little bit of raw umber and I just dry brushed over the top of it. And you can see there just how it dirties it up and makes the label look the way it does. Now, why did I do these gaps here? Because you're trying to put a flat label over a double curved area 
you're going to end up with wrinkles and as such. So, but if you cut it like I did here, it forces it to avoid those cracks. And then all you're doing is dealing with just the camber of the one side. When you're all done, you can see that it turns out pretty darn cool. Now down here, these are just um, dollar store gems that I hit with a Dremel to make them look a little bit rougher. Stick them on, and once again, I dry brushed with the raw umber. Actually, I think the brush is right there still. So the raw umber is your friend on this. And then I took the same brush, and I just hit it along the bottom, hit it along the top, and then hit it around the inside of the top as well. And you see, you end up with a really cool looking keg that looks as realistic as you need it to be. I'm also going to be including on the file this one. South Farthing Long Bottom Leaf Horn, horn, horn Blower. Lord of the Rings. Anyways, as you can see, there's a second whole barrel here. This one, I verithaned the whole thing, and I'm going to put them both up here. I'm just not going to knock my contact cement on the floor because that would be an absolute disaster. You can see the difference in color just from using the verithane on it to, to get it stained up. Your finish is up to you and what you want to do and how you want to go about it. This is the standard finish. This is the other. And if you've if you painted this, like maybe you didn't get as lucky to have aged EVA foam like I did. But you can see that these things look very realistic regardless of which way you go. And they've got such character to them. You put these in a the scene, no one's ever going to guess if they're an actual proper keg. And you can see up here, this one's got the rivets, this one doesn't. Have fun with it. Do what you want. Age it up to the point that you're happy. Like here, I did a rust where just a little bit of raw umber and then a little bit of burnt sienna to get the color of this different you can see the difference there anyways i'm going to go display these things somewhere and uh give you the final presentation because it's always fun to do regardless thanks so much for hanging out it was awesome uh, i really like building these thank you to my patrons uh for helping me out every month throwing money my way to, to help build this thing so you guys don't know how much it means to me to to have that coming and helping me and to my subscribers who have been here from the start, all of my viewers, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Regardless, I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, subscribe, and all that jazz if you haven't. And have a good one.